Photoshop Elements 12, you can draw shapes into your digital images. Now the one thing to know about shapes in Photoshop Elements is that shapes are actually treated differently than other things in Photoshop. They are vector graphics and not raster images. Now when you're working with shapes, you should know that shapes are created on individual layers. Although when you create a shape, it shows up on a new layer, you can have more than one shape in a layer, but that depends on how you select the area that you want to add a shape to. Also with shapes, you can edit the color of the shape very easily, and you can use shapes to create web buttons and other items for your web pages, for your albums, whatever you need them for. And to get started creating a shape, the first thing you need to do is you need to select your shape tool and the shape tool is located in this fourth section and it's right under the gradient tool and above your pencil and when you hover over it it says custom shape tool or U. and when you click on that it's going to bring up your options panel and with the shape tool you actually have several options that you need to look at first of all you have the shape custom section and this is where you actually decide what you want your shape to look like and then finally at the end you have this arrow and the arrow is a special selection tool that we'll be talking about in a minute so let's go ahead and select a normal rectangle and then let's come over and look at our additional options now first you have this and this is your fill color and by clicking on that you get your swatches and that's where you decide what color you want your shape to be here you have your style of the shape and if you want a specific looking button, you can select it in your styles panel. And then when you pull the shape, it will look just like that style. Additionally, in the styles panel, you have options for adding kind of extras to your shape. If you want to add a drop shadow, you can select it there. If you want it to make it look like a glass button, you can do it there. Um, you want an outer glow, you can select these all from your style panel. In the next section, this is where you select what shape rectangle you're going to draw, how the drawing is going to react on the canvas. If you have unconstrained, you'll be able to pull the rectangle in any fashion you want to. However, if you want something that's square and you don't want a rectangle shape, you can go down and select square, and then it will only pull in a square shape. Additionally, you can put in a fixed size and type in the width and height that you need. Also, it will give you a proportional rectangle if you want one that's specifically a two to three relative width and height, you can specify that right there. And now that we have everything set up the way we want, let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. And drawing a rectangle is just like making a selection. You're gonna start in the top left corner where you want the rectangle to be, and you're gonna click and drag to create your rectangle. And there you see you have this nice turquoise colored rectangle. And now that your rectangle is drawn, there's a couple of other things that you can do to the rectangle. If you don't like the style now that you have it pulled down, go ahead and go back to your style box and select maybe a drop shadow and add that to your rectangle. So you can change the color of your rectangle. Go down to this box you can click on that and just change the color of the swatch. Now once you've created a shape you can actually move it anywhere you want to and you can do that by going down here to this arrow. You are actually going to be able to select your shape and it's important to know this because when you move your shape here you're just moving the shape itself. If you go up and you grab your move tool and you try to move it you're going to be moving the entire area. So if you had other things on that layer in addition to that shape, you would be moving them with your shape. If you want to move the shape independently of everything else on the layer, you need to do it through your shape tool. One other thing to talk about is when you have your shape selection tool selected, you get this bounding box. So this is how you change the size of your shape or how it's oriented. Now one final thing to talk about before we leave the rectangle shape tool and that's how to add effects and you do this by just coming up here to window and then going to effects or you can punch up F6 on your computer if that's easier for you. When you do so you're going to get a panel bin that gives you different effects that you can easily apply to your rectangle. 
And right now it's showing you various artistic effects that you can add. And since the rectangle is kind of just blue, adding something like film grain isn't going to make much of a difference. And all you do is you just grab it and you drag it on. And then Photoshop Elements 12 is going to ask you if you want to rasterize the layer before you proceed. In this case, that's totally okay, so go ahead and hit okay. And there you're going to see that it added some roughening or film grain to your rectangle. And that's basically how you add an effect in Photoshop Elements 12. And next, let's talk about the cookie cutter tool. Well, the cookie cutter tool is a tool which allows you to crop a photo or cut away from your image using a shape. For example, right now you have this digital image and it's shaped like a rectangle. But if you go in and you use your cookie cutter shape and you select, say, a snowflake, and you come in here and you draw your snowflake on, it will crop your image to look like the snowflake. Every part that's outside the snowflake will disappear. And it's a pretty interesting effect that you might want to use depending on what you're doing. Next we're going to talk about the canvas size. Now there are times when you're working in elements where you want to add something behind the image. For instance, with this image I like it, but maybe I want to have a black border around the whole thing. But I like the size of the image, I just want to have the canvas size and the proportions to be different. Well, to do that, all you have to do is change the canvas size. And keep in mind that this is not enlarging your image. All you're doing is you're adding space on the sides of your canvas to make the image bigger. And to do it, it's really pretty easy. You're just going to go up here to Image, and then come down to Resize. And then here you have some options. You can go with Image Size, and if you were to change the image size, you would actually be resizing your image. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go to Canvas Size, which is Alt-Control-C. And when you do that, you actually bring up a dialog box for Canvas Size. And we're going to go ahead and extend the canvas to a 20 by 20 canvas, which is absolutely huge. But for our purposes of just showing you what it does, that'll be fine. And now that we have that set, we're going to come down here to the canvas extension color. And right now it's set to the background color, which is going to be white. Remember, this is your background, and that's the background color that's going to show up. But you could also select a different color. You could go with the foreground, or you could go black, or you could go gray. And I'm going to go ahead and go with black because I just like a black background. And there you go. Now you see that your image is exactly the same size, it's still centered, but around it you now have this bigger canvas that you can use to create text or captioning, whatever you need to do with a bigger size. Now that you have used bigger canvas size, you may want to know how do you get rid of it. Well, you can do it the same way you use a cookie cutter, but just by using the crop tool. Now go back into your cookie cutter tool, click on that, and go next to it to your crop tool and then come up here to the top of your old image and just drag down to the bottom of the old image size and then once you have that selected I think I missed a tiny bit there so I'll go slightly out make sure you have it set the way you want pull that back up and then hit commit changes and it crops it back to the previous image size Next we're going to talk about rotating and flipping the image. And when you flip an image, you can flip it either vertically or horizontally. And when you rotate it, you can spin it around a full 360 degrees. And you just come up to your menu bar and go to Image, click on that, and then the first one down is going to be Rotate. And this is where your options are. And the first top options here, up into this line, affect the entire image without a selection. And within that, you have options. You can do a 90 degree left. You can then go 90 degrees right, which will move it back. You can rotate it 180 degrees, which pretty much flips it upside down. You can do that again to bring it back where it was. You can custom rotate, which is where you specify an angle. If you know that you need it at a 30 degree angle to your right or left, just go ahead and type that in and hit OK and it will do that. Come back up to image rotate and you can see that you can flip it horizontally or you can go ahead and flip it vertically if you want it to change its orientation like that. 
So that's different things that you can do to rotate the image. Now also in this menu bar, you have the options to do a free rotate layer. And with free rotate, you get your bounding box and you can rotate by clicking and dragging 360 degrees and that's how you use your free rotate. Finally, before we leave this lesson, we're going to talk about a couple other tools that are pretty handy and you might find yourself using for various reasons. And those tools are the smudge tool, the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and the dodge and burn tool. First of all, you're going to need to know where you can find these tools. And the first set of tools is actually located within this blur tool options panel. So if you come over here to this teardrop looking icon and you click on that, and then you go down to your options panel, which should look very familiar at this point in time. You'll see that under the blur options, you have your choice between the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and the smudge tool. And first off, let's start with the blur tool. And with the blur tool set, you're going to set your blending mode, what kind of brush you have, the size, and the strength of the blur. So let's go ahead and use a fairly large brush. We're going to put it at about 205. And let's go ahead and try blurring out this foot here and just softening it up a little bit so that we move some of the focus of the image away from the foot and more towards the 13. And to kind of balance it out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to blur around the edges there. And you can see by clicking and dragging that you have slowly made these areas of the image more blurry. Now next we're going to go to this little triangle and that's going to be your sharpen tool. And I want to sharpen this 13 area and I'm going to do that by going ahead and sticking with normal and the brush, let's go with a slightly harder brush and let's make it a little bit bigger. Now we're going to go over our 13 and we're going to click and drag and it's pretty subtle but you can see that it's sharpening that 13 just a little bit to make it stand out more. So you're going to click and drag more over that and pretty soon you have a fairly sharp 13. Now finally we have the smudge tool and what the smudge tool does is it takes pixels that are next to each other and kind of smears them into each other. So it's a little more drastic than your blur but you can use it to like if you have a spot on your photo that you want to get rid of the smudge tool really will blend it into the rest of the image. So let's go ahead and bring up our pixel size and let's try to smudge this bright green leaves area out here so that we can kind of blend it into the grass. And the thing with the smudge tool is that if you're in the bright green and you pull, you're going to be pulling the bright green down. So you really want to be in the dark area and pull it over the light green to cover it up. It's a little weird, but just remember, whatever you're over, when you click and drag, that's what you're pulling and smudging. So you kind of work with that a little bit, and you will start to get rid of that area. And you can kind of pull into the corners to get more of a blurriness going on in that area. You can kind of get rid of that pine cone too if you want. And then when you're done, you can see that you don't have distinctive areas there. You just have kind of a messy, blurry area, and it's an interesting effect. Next, let's go over to this sponge-looking icon, and that is going to be your sponge tool. You can also bring it up by hitting the O on your keyboard, and click on that. And now you have your sponge tool, your dodge tool, and your burn tool. And for these tools, you have a slightly different options panel. And what you'll notice here is that with mode, you have desaturate or saturate. And desaturate actually takes the color out, saturate makes the color stronger. And what the sponge tool actually does is it's used to bring out or mute the color of an object or an area of an image by either saturating it or desaturating it. And the best way to kind of understand that is just to show you. With your sponge tool selected, once again, you're going to either select saturate or desaturate, and we're going to go ahead with saturate. And then you select your brush size. Let's bring it down a little bit, and let's bring the flow up a little bit. And we're going to increase the intensity on this 13 by pulling over it. And as you can see, you get a very subtle effect, but it's making the color brighter 
in that area. And the more you go over it, the more it's going to saturate the color. But you can increase the saturation of an area with the sponge tool. And by using the sponge tool, it's also going to be a little more subtle than doing it with a paintbrush. You can also go down here and saturate more into the green. And if you don't like that and you actually want to desaturate it and de-emphasize your green, you can just change your mode to desaturate, maybe go a little bit bigger with your size, and start pulling out color down in here. And as you can see, the brightness of the green is kind of coming out of that area as you drag over it. And once again, you can drag over more than once and slowly it's getting grayed out. So that's the sponge tool. Next you're going to have your color dodge tool. And the dodge tool and the burn tool are very similar tools, but the difference is whether they lighten or darken an area of an image. And the dodge tool, which is the lollipop looking icon, actually brings out the details in the shadow while the burn tool is going to bring out details in the highlights. So if you have your dodge tool selected and set it for highlights, and this is going to lighten your highlights. Now, if you come down to your burn tool, it's gonna do the exact opposite. So go ahead and click on your burn tool, and right now it's in mid-tone, so let's go back to your highlights. And if you run back over it, you'll see that it's going to gray out everything that you just brought out. So that's basically what you're doing with your color dodge and your color burn tools.